On this episode of Vinnie Cosé, we're in Martinique discussing OECS regional integration. In the 35 years since its establishment, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States has made great strides in moving the small developing island nations in the region toward full integration. The OECS is seen as a successful economic union with common trade policies and a stable regional currency in the Eastern Caribbean dollar. However, many of the countries within the OECS are under severe financial pressure with growing incidence of poverty, an increasingly competitive tourism market, and a challenge in climate for sustained economic growth. There is still much work to be done to facilitate the promotion of open trade around the region and to increase the awareness of the benefits of being an OECS citizen. The looming question becomes, how do we balance the theoretical expectations of regional integration with the reality of the barriers we face as non-independent and autonomous nation states? My name is Onel Sanford Bell, and I'll be moderating today's Vinnie Cosé discussion on regional integration from Villa Chanteclair in Fort de France, Martinique. Vinnie Cosé! I would like to begin today's discussion by inviting the panel to briefly share their respective views on what has been achieved to date through regional integration. And I invite the first response from the elected representative of the collectivity of Martinique, Madame Les Dimans. Merci de votre invitation. Alors, la préoccupation de l'intégration de la Martinique euh, dans le bassin caribéen a été une des préoccupations depuis 1998 du président Alfred Marijan, qui a été poursuivie par d'autres, euh, par le président euh, Lechimi, sous cette intégration, puisque nous sommes euh, membres de l'AEC et nous, et nous siégeons également à l'OECS. Il est très important pour nous de, de cette présence de la Martinique. D'ailleurs, la Martinique également siège à la CTO, justement, comme membre de la Caribbean Tourism Organization. Et nous avons la vice-présidence de cette commission au niveau du tourisme, représentant les pays français de la Caraïbe. But what would you say uh, you have achieved from your membership to these regional organizations? Le, le fait d'être de fait d'être dans cette intégration, de pouvoir travailler de façon plus approfondie avec tous les pays de la Caraïbe, coopérer, hein, coopérer, c'est travailler un peu avec l'autre et même beaucoup. Et nous avons euh, aujourd'hui à donner notre opinion, à pouvoir discuter de pays à pays avec les autres pays de la Caraïbe. Et c'est important pour nous parce que par le passé euh, était assise aux tables de, né de différentes négociations la France. Et aujourd'hui, la Martinique peut parler en son nom propre euh, sur euh, euh, tous les sujets qui nous préoccupent, euh, qui sont les mêmes. Thank you, Madame Lestema. Thank you. You're welcome. If I can move over to Madame Cataillé, from a private sector standpoint, what are some of the tangible benefits that regional integration has achieved for the private sector here in Martinique? Well, I would say that the work has been done before the uh, real Martinique integration to OECS. So it's, um, it's, we have built these ties long, long ago. And, uh, but the, one of the major moves um, is that we reinforced our linkage with uh, OECS counterparts, institutional as well as private sector. Also, we um, conducted joint actions uh, for a better mutual understanding. Uh, and it is very important to uh, do business within the region, to understand each other's, you know, how we do business together. 
and how business has to be conducted. And also building an institutional network was important to discuss on the same issues. The groundwork was laid and the essential agreement essentially allowed you to consolidate those interests. Yeah, correct. Right. Right. Mikael Henderson, now as an artist, mm -hmm. somebody in the creative sector, you're spanning several demographics. <laughs> yeah. What is your experience as you traverse the region to ply your craft? I think artists and, and um, athletes around the region have enjoyed this benefit of being able to travel freely between the OECS, among the OECS countries. And even here in Martinique, even before I became an associate member, um, I've enjoyed the, the privilege of, of coming here to be able to perform um, with quite a bit of ease. So it has been uh, in the works and operational and beneficial to artists and athletes for many years. And it's, it's encouraging to see that the, the policies are now coming into place. It's, it's showing us that we, uh, we do not necessarily need to limit our services and our, our art and our products and to our immediate local regions. And um, we should do our best to make maximum use of this integration that's already been there for so long. And Mr. Huntley, you've been the heart of this movement for a, a very long time, done some very intricate work to establish some of the framework that would guide regional integration. Mm -hmm. What has it achieved for us? Okay, everybody knows the OECS started in 81, 35 years, but in fact, the movement is older than that. The, the OECS is a successor organization to one called the West Indies Associated States Council of Ministers, which was formed in 1966. So last year was actually 50 years of integration and cooperation among those countries. The fact that we have kept at it for 50 years is, is a mark of success. And now that Martinique is in, it, 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 in, it in fact reinforces this because as British colonists, we didn't speak to each other, we didn't speak to Martinique, we didn't speak to the French. And now we are, we are communicating with each other. And of course, there's a very tangible economic benefit. And that is the fact of the currency, the East Caribbean dollar. Can you imagine if each of these little islands had its own currency or trouble <laughs> that we would be in? The fact that we have been able to cooperate together in uh, monetary union mm -hmm. is extremely important for this region. Mm -hmm. And I should point out that um, Barbados now is going through a lot of difficulty. There's, there's a whole debate in Barbados as to whether they should devalue. Barbados used to be a member of the currency authority in, in, in 1973 and decided to go on their own. And, and so by sticking together, we have achieved a lot. Yes, I, I fully agree with um, what has been previously said. Um, what I would like to add is that uh, the major benefits that I see in terms of the associate membership is really the opportunity for longer term um, relationships and longer term engagements. We're really talking about um, longer term projects and measures that can actually um, have a greater impact on the citizens' lives, the, the, the business communities as well, um, because we have this opportunity for regular meetings. If you're outside the regional integration process, then you get just occasional opportunities to, to meet with your neighbors. If you're inside the organization, then you're part of a family and you are building joint initiatives together, taking into consideration the interest of each and every single island. Mm -hmm. So um, this would be one of the, the major benefits that I would add. Thank you. And that is, the, that is the, the key point to understand about regionalism. There are some things as small island states and even as, as bigger countries that you can do better mm -hmm. if you do them together. Absolutely. I'm wondering if uh, Professor Quizel can add something to that. I would like to make a technical point to start. We are talking uh, since the beginning about regional integration for Martinique. Mm -hmm. In fact, we should not use this expression. We should only use regional cooperation mm -hmm. because we are not an independent state. In fact, we are already integrated mm -hmm. into the French Republic and into the European uh, Union. 
So uh, the real theme we should be developing is what we can do to do more cooperation. We are only an associate member, so we cannot be, in, for example, you cannot have free movement of labor because all that is not uh, uh, in our capacity of decision. It pertains to the, the French Republic. But, but we cannot be in the bloc. You can't be we in the We only can cooperate with the bloc. So what you're saying is that by virtue of the fact that you are now an associate member of the OECS, the, the traditional OECS states can find strength in their relationship with Martinique, which has a voice at the European Council. And, so. and this, is, this can be very useful. For example, on the question of bananas, mm -hmm. some years ago, we have the threat of Chiquita and the people from the, the producers of Latin America, mm -hmm. which are producing much cheaper than the Caribbean. Yes. And we succeeded in getting for about something like five or six years, a special treatment of price for the English speaking uh, Caribbean Thank you, Professor Quizel. And thank you for raising the point about cooperation versus integration, which leads me back to Mr. Huntley. Do you think that we should be talking more about cooperation as opposed to integration, given that the OECS membership does include several non-independent states who are clearly limited in terms of what they can negotiate? Well, we, look, we will continue talking cooperation with them, mm -hmm. but the integration process, which is the, at the heart of the OECS, has to continue. Was that the, one of the reasons for setting up the regional integration movement in the 66 was, in fact, another way of getting at political unification. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there's cooperation now with the French overseas territories. Mm -hmm. Maybe in another 50 years, we might be talking integration. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Madame Les Demain, yes? Tout à fait, le processus très lent, mais euh, peut-être que là nous n'allons pas, c'est peut-être pas le lieu hein, de, 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 de faire éclater nos différences sur la coopération et l'intégration de la Martinique euh, dans la Caraïbe. Enfin, pour nous, euh, il est très important que l'on puisse travailler, que l'on puisse intégrer, qu'on ne se sente pas simplement comme des personnes euh, associées à notre bassin caribéen, mais qu'on a notre part tout à fait entièrement dans la Caraïbe. Et aujourd'hui, notre président de l'exécutif est prêt à travailler encore plus qu'avec qu les moyens que lui donnons, voudront bien lui donner la France ou l'Europe, mais nous sommes prêts à prendre le pari des process nous permettant de, 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 de se sentir bien, de pouvoir coopérer, de pouvoir euh, se sentir caribéen. Parce que avant d'être français, avant d'être européen, on l'est de façon stratégiquement politique, mais stratégiquement en géopolitique, on est d'abord des Caribéens. Donc c'est peut-être la différence, de, de, c'est peut-être notre différence d'approche avec M. Cruzol sur la présence de la Martinique réelle dans la Caraïbe. Thank you, Madame Lestema. It seems to be the interest is there to work together? Is it just a matter of labels? No, actually, um, we have to be careful about the words, in fact. Um, regional co-integration um, supposes that a country gives up part of its sovereignty to a regional body or institution that will um, work on its behalf and for the interest of its people. Functional cooperation is really, about, is really about working together to develop joint action, joint initiatives, um, joint projects, but each country remains sovereign and the decision-making process um, is really um, controlled at, the, at, the, at the, the level of the state, the country. So if we're talking about terminology, we have to be aware that we are talking about two different concepts and two different ambitions, therefore. Um, and this is really not only about Martinique. Um, it's also an issue if you look at um, the other associate members of the OECS. 
the British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, mm -hmm. um, have also the same questions about their participation into the organization, into the everyday work of the organization. I do not think that uh, there are two agendas, functional cooperation and regional integration. Um, <laughs> that in fact, the integration process started with functional cooperation in areas like, as you say, the court, etc., And it, it gradually expands. So whereas in 1968 we had a common market, the revised treaty is now saying an economic union. So gradually the movement is deepening and expanding. So it is not two different agendas, but, but areas where we can cooperate. I'm going a bit far, but still. On purpose, actually. <laughs> OK. Because I think that, especially within the associate members, you need to make that clarification so that people can feel free to get on board. To me, a solution to that is about really approaching and presenting the OECS as both a regional integration organization mm -hmm. and a functional cooperation organization. The organization does have two different agendas. I may be going a little bit far, but yeah. they complement each other. Right. Because you cannot do regional integration without doing functional cooperation. That's, that's the first step that you need to take. The issue has existed from very early, from the inception. Uh, if one goes through the revised Treaty of Bastet, which is the treaty that sets up the uh, economic union of the OECS, you will note that, that it continues the definition of members and makes a distinction between an associate member and a full member. Mm -hmm. um, this is to expressly recognize the difference between the membership. So rather than thinking of this distinction as a contradiction, I would support the view that they in fact complement each other because it allows for there to be an integration process and also a process by which you could cooperate Mm -hmm. with people within the same geographic space which have common interests and goals that they would like to pursue together. We've been talking about regional integration. We've heard how it's worked within the different sectors represented here, but we thought it useful to canvas some ideas from ordinary people on the street to find out what they think about free movement and this regional integration. So I'd like to present a very short Vox Pop video. Well, I love the idea. One Nation, One Caribbean, the Eastern Caribbean OECS, free movement. It's a beautiful idea, especially if you're spending one money, which is the Eastern Caribbean currency. One Caribbean, one movement, one people winning. I find that sometimes we say we don't want foreigners to be entering here. But sometimes these very same foreigners are the ones to perpetuate wealth, growth, you name it. So the heads of government is, is in, should do more to keep the Caribbean together. It really expands your uh, market in terms of, let's say you're a farmer, you can you know, market your produce to other Caribbean territories. I see that as, as a plus. If somebody is coming from another country, that is going to help to develop and enhance what you already have, I don't have a problem with regional integration. When you check the population of my country is at least 80,000, right? And you're going to bring your, your wife, your kids, your grandchildren, your grandmother, grandfather, just name it. I don't back certain things. Right. So what we've heard is a reinforcement of some of the views expressed from the panel. And this actually allows for the introduction of some new perspectives, the challenges to regional integration. This is one of the challenges, um, mm -hmm. that people fear freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. It was one of the things that broke up the Federation in 1962, because Jamaicans were afraid that people from the small islands would flood Jamaica. Today, the, re the reverse is happening. There are Jamaicans working all over the Caribbean. So that shows you that there's really nothing to be afraid of. Um, the people who say that um, 
is going to facilitate criminals moving across. Mm -hmm. The criminals are moving across without, without that. So the, the, one of the challenges is, is um, education. Um, mm -hmm. And at the, at the institutional level, mm -hmm. at the level of the heads of government, of the governments, mm -hmm. even if we have had 50 years of cooperation and integration, we wanted a political union, we haven't got there. We have tried, mm -hmm. but people want to hold on to insular power. People want to hold on to being king in a small island. But factually speaking, we are very small in the OECS. And so people feed into that when they start thinking insular. Mm -hmm. But is it a real concern? And, I, and I'd like to invite uh, Mikael Henderson to speak to us about that as a young person on the ground. Some islands have, have certain issues, but people envisage a strain on the local economy or on local social services and that sort of thing before they actually see the benefit of it. And I think that's partly to do with the way that we have um, educated people on integration. We haven't exactly um, touted the benefits and the merits enough at a grassroots level at for grassroots people to level. understand and then make a more informed decision. But it's the same thing with the European Union. This is not unique to the OECS. Right. You know, we have this is an international problem. Right. What impact do you think Brexit? has on this regional integration movement? It has lessons for us in terms of the integration movement in that Brexit partly resulted in the sense that people in England felt that they were being imposed upon by a, a center somewhere far apart. The laws of the EU are being applied there, etc. So that we have to be careful in terms of how we advance our integration movement and how people perceive the integration movement. Right, that, is, that is one lesson. Thank you for that input. And I wanted to pause at this time to allow for any audience input. Thanks. Uh, the discussion so far was very uh, interesting and stimulating indeed. Uh, my name is Jean-Michel Salmon. I'm an uh, economist and uh, uh, assistant professor at the University of the West Indies here. Uh, notwithstanding the very quality we've been hearing here, I, I would like to uh, go one step further uh, in terms of the technical uh, aspects uh, Jean uh, mentioned mm -hmm. and well, that were discussed. So the question I would like to ask to, to the, these distinguished panelists is this one. Uh, between the two extremes, legal integration and simple cooperation, can we envisage, or maybe it's already on the ground and you are working on it, huh, uh, some further common policies, or at least Martinique would try to get on board uh, a common policy that is implemented by the OECS uh, countries and, uh, and the organization. Uh, and if so, uh, in what sector would be uh, best to try to, to push forward this idea? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your contributions. Madame Lesalles. Well, if you look at um, the work of the OECS and the agenda of the organization, you do have um, a division that is um, that actually dedicates its work to regional integration um, and then you also have another division of the, the the commission which dedicates its work to functional cooperation and under that particular division it's very easy for the associate members to actually um, relate to the policies of the OECS um, in the area of trade. Um, so within that economic division, um, there's a strong need as well to, to relate to the organization because it's one of the main ambitions and objectives of, of um, Martinique's accession into the OECS as well. So even though Martinique has not signed, of course, the protocol for the economic union, um, we are not part of the free movement of people and the free circulation of goods, services and capital um, dynamics. Um, there is a, a common will to work together um, to facilitate the, the, the exchanges and that can be done by several measures. Yes. Well, thank you. And the gentleman here has been standing for a while, so I will allow his input. Merci d'être là et nous, Martinique, sommes très contents que cette intégration régionale avance, mais ma démarche, elle est essentiellement euh, 
je dirais, d'une utopie généreuse de ma génération quoi, à, ce, à, ce, à, ce, à ce rêve hein, d'intégration de, de, caraïbe. Et, et ma vision, elle est politique. C'est-à-dire que euh, ce que je voudrais, c'est que cette Caraïbe, nous sommes, nous partons de constat, je n'ai pas une contribution, nous sommes le continent métiste. Nous avons une culture où nous nous ressemblons. Et par conséquent, euh, nous devons bâtir cette civilisation qui, est, qui doit être plus importante que celle de l'Europe. Et c'est ça ma vision, en fait. C'est juste ça, dire que nous sommes ce continent métis et nous avons une civilisation à bâtir. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you so much for your um, contribution, sir. And uh, I would like to re-engage Madame Les Demain on the, a question that is translated here for me. And the question asks, are the authorities in Martinique satisfied with the level of public awareness of regional integration? If not, how does the CTM propose to increase the level of public awareness among the populace? Effectivement, on a un, un gros parcours à faire. Et comme disait notre artiste, le comportement de celui-même du Martiniquais qui est à l'intérieur, qui se laisse euh, embobiner l'esprit par euh, le gouvernement français, par exemple, qui dit que tout ce qui vient de la Caraïbe ne peut, ne peut nous apporter que de la délinquance. Il faut que nous, Martiniquais, que nous puissions se dire que certes, il y a cette difficulté, qu'il peut avoir cette difficulté, exactement comme l'Antillais qui est en France, qui peut rencontrer des difficultés. Mais qu'il faut que l'on vive la présence des Caribéens comme une richesse pour la Martinique. Ça doit être, nos, nos, nos relations doivent être du gagnant-gagnant. J'ai apporté des choses à la Caraïbe et la Caraïbe a également à me porter des choses. Donc il faut qu'on arrête de se voir comme des, comme se voir en chaîne faïence et se dire que euh, l'Haïtien, le Saint-Lucien ou le Dominicain qui est en Martinique, c'est forcément euh, mal, mal vécu. Il faut qu'on arrive à, à retrouver cette fraternité de, 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 du, du, du Caribéen qui est présent euh, sous le territoire. At a factual level, a Saint-Lucien can go to Europe without a visa for 90 days. But to come to Martinique beyond 15 days, that same national requires a visa. At your level, what can be done to revisit that kind of um, limitation on movement to help facilitate the vision that you've just expressed? Comment expliquer, justement, ce, ne serait-ce que par euh, une mauvaise opinion, ce, cette différence il y, a, il y a une aberration que nous devons, au niveau de la CTM et au niveau de nos députés, euh, combattre pour faire comprendre que nous devons, que tous les Caribéens, quel que soit sur le territoire français qu'ils vont, soient traités sous la même base d'égalité. C'est ce combat que nous devons mener, mais nous devons être convaincus de cela, que ce n'est pas normal qu'il y ait cette différence de traitement. Nous devons justement, et c'est dans le programme d'ailleurs de l'OECO où nous avançons justement sur, ce, sur, sur ces aberrations. I have personal experience of this, where I can travel as a Dominican citizen to France or to Italy, to any of the European countries for 90 days at a time without... It's, it's easier for me to actually get up and go to, go to France than it is to come to Martinique. Um, there are less restrictions on me going there than coming to my neighbor. And I can actually see Martinique from my house. Mr. Montplaisy? Yes, yes, please. Thanks. We must transform our difficulties into opportunities. For instance, we have a problem problem of the people coming up and down. We must be very realistic on that. Mm -hmm. We do have problems. Mm -hmm. The drug is coming in Martinique. The drug is in St. Clusher. I mean, I don't want to offense anyone, but the, the level of criminality in some of those islands is so high that we are trying to protect ourselves. I, I don't want to give figures, but you know them. You know them, and that's a real problem. We must not forget that. But apart from that, we have to improve We want, we want to, to have that in mind because if we want to have a construction, it, it must be realistic. Mm -hmm. We have many people from St. Lucia coming in the Martinican hospitals. Mm -hmm. 
And as a matter of fact, the, 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 the Ministry of Health was telling me, I don't know how we can pay that. It's a matter because it cannot continue like that. We are part of, of Europe and they have special programs and they can take 75% of the cost of, of having people to come and get uh, to, to be to the hospital in Martinique. So it's just a question of will. And presently, we are working on that. The government of St. Lucia would have to say, here is the amount we can afford, and, and, and Europe is, will take 75% more of that cost. So that's very important, and it could, that can improve the reality of our common interest, and that is real integration. Thank you, thank you for your input. And the gentleman here who's been waiting. Uh, je ne vais parler, je ne vais pas parler d'intégration, de coopération, mais de présence et de présence culturelle. Il est évident que c'est très important le commerce, la banane, l'espace aérien, etc. Mais comme cela vient d'être dit, ne pas oublier la base fondamentale qui nous unit, c'est le problème de la culture caribéenne qui passe par des langues, le français que nous le voulions ou que nous ne le voulions pas, l'anglais, l'espagnol, mais n'oublions pas l'autre langue maternelle présente dans beaucoup d'îles de la Caraïbe, le créole. Car les créoles de la Caraïbe font partie de l'âme culturelle de la Caraïbe. Et je félicite, si je peux donc féliciter, euh, le vinicosé qui a été ainsi euh, euh, affiché. Ce n'est qu'un début, mais s'il vous plaît, ne, ne nous enfermons pas dans le matérialisme, quel qu'il soit, même si cela est indispensable pour la vie. Mais pour la vie est indispensable aussi la culture et sa composante linguistique. Merci. Thank you. And an apt way to conclude this segment and transition now into some material matters <laughs> wrapped up in trade. Ambassador Huntley, how crucial is trade to the advancement of the economic union? It is. It is very crucial. Um, the Economic exchanges is very important in advancing the integration movement. Unfortunately, historically, and one of the feelings was that all our trade really was directed towards Europe. So we, ha we hardly traded with one another. And I think that is one of the reasons why you've found that in terms of the political side of integration, it has not advanced. So given what Ambassador Huntley just expressed, Madame Kataye, what are the gaps that have been created that you are now discovering within the Caribbean space and particularly between Martinique and the, the English-speaking OECS countries? Well, we have not discovered the gaps now. The gaps have been present for many years. Yeah, so we have weak trade, weak trade because of um, historical, mm -hmm. historical differences, mm -hmm. the difficult access to market intelligence within the Caribbean. Also, the, always the issue, the same issue that has been in the past, the issue of transportation. I would say that we, we had to move backward because in the past it was easier to trade with the Caribbean than now because, you know, ships have to uh, comply to the EU regulation. And that means that, you know, any boat has to be controlled. And so we have less boats now coming and being able to bring some goods. And we have tried for many years to work on, to fill these gaps. And it was not easy because the uh, political position was not clear and we didn't have, the private sector didn't have the support of the political um, the political institutions mm -hmm. now that there is a common will to go f towards integration cooperation this is a little without any offense to anyone but this is a little semantic for businesses but the gaps remain okay thank you for the clarification when we talk about trade we only talk about we do we only think about trade in goods but you have trade in services too, yes. which is very important in the Caribbean because most of the Caribbean countries have a large part of the GDP depending on tourism. 
And there is a sector where, where cooperation can be made. Right now, we have a development of air transport mm -hmm. in the French Caribbean, mm -hmm. which can be of much help for the development of tourism in the rest of the Caribbean. On the regional air transport market, the French Caribbean is much more competitive than the English-speaking Caribbean. Mm -hmm. But there is a certain uh, resistance right. in the English-speaking Caribbean because they're protecting some of their plants. For example, if you look at the situation between right. Air Antilles Express and uh, Liat, mm -hmm. Liat, for example, uh, the price, the cost uh, for uh, a person by kilometers uh, for, for um, Liat is 40 cents of euros. In Martinique, for the same person on a flight in the Caribbean mm -hmm. is 20 cents. It's right. twice le uh, less. Mm -hmm. And of course, if those companies, the French, comp the French uh, Caribbean companies enter the whole market, it will be a very serious competition. Right. And um, if you compare the situation between Liat, where you have about 600 people employed mm -hmm. on Liat, and you have something like 35 people employed in, uh, in, <laughs> in Air, Air Antilles Express, th then you understand uh, the problem. Right. So, so the point which I wanted to make is that you have some um, opposition, some uh, refusal <laughs> in the Caribbean mm -hmm. against free movement of goods and services. But that is one of the big challenges. You mentioned Liat, we've got all those airlines. But to show you how irrational the whole system is and why we need in a sense to create one airspace and work on this together. It's a question of airports. Mm -hmm. St. Vincent just opened at tremendous cost an international airport. There's an international airport in St. Lucia, UNRO, which is 15 minutes flying time from St. Vincent. Trinidad has an international airport. Grenada has one. St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Martinique, Guadeloupe, right? Antigua. If we rationalize, if we were one country, we would have two international airports. One in the south, one in the north. And a hub and spoke everybody else. So we have to rationalize this, both in terms of our tourism, but more importantly, in terms of how we move our people. We cannot talk about free movement of persons mm -hmm. when it is easier and cheaper to go to Miami right. from any part of the Caribbean than to go from St. Lucia to, to Martinique. Right. So the, the issues with transportation are well expressed. And uh, I'd like to, at this point, invite the input from a Dominican businessman who trades with Martinique and several other OECS islands, and he has been able to share with us some of his experience, um, some of his experiences as a businessman. I am the owner and managing director of Toulon Agencies, and um, our prime product that we manufacture at this point in time is the oil of Ojas. In March of this year, we will be 22 years with this particular product, the oil of OJAS, on the market. Dominica is a market of 72,000. And our uh, market's increasing, eh? I mean, I'm getting more and more of a market here. But it, it is increasing. Also, you would have what you call a lapse in, 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 in demand. So in other words, let's say Jolly's was to buy and it lasts them three months. If you had only the Dominica market, then it means you'd have no sales for three months. So therefore, the more markets you have in your basket of exports, the more stable your business is. The, the goods, like my product, the oil of Ojas, actually comes in cheaper due to VAT. Because when we manufacture for export in the OECS and CARICOM, we prepare something called a certificate of origin, and this knocks out the import duty. Now, if the company you're dealing with is big enough and they're VAT registered, 
then they will pay the VAT when they pay in the duty, but they can recover the VAT. Antigua is not yet VAT uh, registered. In other words, they have not yet adopted the VAT regime. So um, in terms of having a policy, if the islands decide that they're going VAT, then everybody should go VAT. And it's affecting me because I have to drop my price a little more to get it into there and to keep the market. For the moment, I'm doing more of my shipments of Liat. And in terms of um, LTL cargo, you know, le and less than container load cargo between the islands, that seems to be very difficult. The shipping aspect um, is definitely something that the heads of the OECS would have to look at. I got an order through my website and I shipped the order by FedEx into Martinique and they returned it. And they said that's forbidden under French law. Eventually, my distributors um, had to charter boats to come to Dominica. Martinique's market is big. It's 485,000 um, affluent. The, con the currency is also strong, you know? So all these are things we have to look at. And um, I welcome the inclusion of Martinique into the OECS. And what we have to fight for is to um, I wouldn't say bend the rules, but maybe set up some special trading arrangements so that it's a little easier to get the product into there. Madame Cataye, can you identify with the issues expressed by Mr. Toulon in Dominica? Yes, I know very well this, this, what he pointed out as um, being some challenges for him as being a businessman to export to Martinique, but vice versa. But, you know, coming to Martinique, it's a big challenge beca because of these EU regulations. And we have been working on a project you know, through a bilateral agreement that has been signed between Martinique and St. Lucia in 2014 to work on an ex a project um, uh, to have an experience in, uh, in facilitating the entrance of 10 products from St. Lucia to Martinique and vice versa. And working on all the hurdles, as he was saying, uh, the, the, the different aspects, the uh, regulation aspect, the standards, norms, taxes, what we call the octroi de mer. The businessman. He also raised some impediments um, to trade, even within the currency union itself, with regards to VAT. And it, it points to the lack of harmonization, I suppose, of some policies. Related to the VAT mm -hmm. would be the import taxes, mm -hmm. which we which, uh, impose on goods when they cross borders within the member states. And even at that level, a lot of work has been going into trying to harmonize mm -hmm. the taxes. Um, that are imposed on the border, border, especially where it relates to the consumption taxes. So it's work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, the ultimate goal is to have harmonization, but there would have to be a conscious effort by the member states and the heads of the member states to agree on a common and harmonized process of uh, taxation. Yes, um, Dwight raised up the, the point a while ago of the differences in that. And it's really a question of, of having to give up some sovereignty. And um, by the political directorate. Mm -hmm. And this has been one of the difficulties and continues to be a difficulty. So the political will, yes, is, is, a, and is quite apparent in, in air transportation. It's a classic example of the need for political will mm -hmm. to create a system that will benefit all of us. I wanted to introduce the third video of an initiative that is taking place in Martinique, which I think would be of some value to share with the audience today. At Energy Agency of Martinique, we try to help people to develop renewable energy locally. So at this time, we are 93% uh, uh, dependent on oil, so, uh, on energy, so for transportation, for houses, for uh, offices, for industry and agriculture. So it's important and our plan in Martinique is to reach uh, zero in uh, dependence on fuel uh, by 2030. 
I'm Leslie Bocali and I work for a company which is called Sisteco, uh, which installs solar uh, systems for, for buildings. Technically, we know a lot of things about solar systems. It's a very reliable technology. It's not a replacement, it's an alternative. And thanks to the alternative, you can, uh, you can produce up to 80% of your energy. The battery storage uh, stores the energy you produce during the day and after you can use it during the night. Um, of course, if you, have many, uh, if you have many days of rain, rainy days, uh, you can still use the grid. And there is a new framework on self-consumption, PV self-consumption. It's a, a new concept in France and in Martinique. And uh, now we can produce electricity for ourselves and we can sell legally this electricity to our neighbors or to uh, uh, nearby people. It's not by passing the grid, it's with the grid. So you have the right to do that and people can buy energy directly from you and not from the grid. So it's interesting and it's a new way to develop uh, renewable energy, PV uh, energy in Martinique. The concept of the self-consumption of electricity in Martinique, which is an extremely fascinating concept for me coming from the Eastern Caribbean where we don't have this kind of um, uh, opportunity. At a regional level, could we not look at what other member states are doing and look at the portability of those ideas? Well, the opportunities for that are many because that's exactly what the OECS is about. And we are talking about network of excellence in, in the area of renewable energies, and I'm glad that you have highlighted this um, example. But we've also, we are also talking about network of excellence in the area of education and training, hospitality, um, training, network of excellence for health. So the assets for Martinique and how you liaise the assets um, of Martinique in the, in the health sector that Mr. Montplaisir mentioned with the rest of the island. That's exactly what the OECS is about. Thank you so much. Before I ask the panel to wrap up, I wanted to open the floor for further audience input. Alors moi, je suis un militant de base, comme on dit en Martinique, en, ici, issu de la rue, du monde de la rue, du, du, du grand nord de la Martinique. Et je m'interroge sur justement l'identité caribéenne et la démarche que vous entreprenez aujourd'hui. Euh, il y a eu d'abord le CARICOM, ensuite l'OECS. Aujourd'hui, vous venez, vous nous parlez du, de, du travail ensemble. Or, aujourd'hui, on constate qu'on a toujours ces deux instances qui existent et qui sont presque en compétition aujourd'hui. Euh, à quel moment l'OECS et le CARICOM, vous allez vous mettre ensemble pour pouvoir travailler À quel moment on va décider de mettre une langue unique qui, à mon avis, je vous signale qu'à New York, on a adopté la langue créole comme l'une des langues officielles. Donc peut-être que plutôt que d'aller vers l'anglais, profiter justement de cette langue qui est merveilleuse pour pouvoir développer une économie culturelle derrière. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to um, back on the question regarding OECS and CARICOM, just to say really briefly that those are two institutions, but you have to take into consideration that apart from Martinique, the whole of the OECS membership is also a member of CARICOM. You have to consider the OECS as a driving force within CARICOM. Je suis donc Émilie Coton Pelagi, donc chef d'entreprise. Donc je suis dans le domaine en fait de la cosmétique naturelle. Donc je détiens en fait une marque de cosmétiques à base de cactus. Et effectivement, euh, je rentre totalement en fait, euh, dans votre démarche, puisque je souhaite, euh, bien évidemment, pouvoir m'exporter aussi euh, dans la Caraïbe, bien que je sois déjà en, fait, euh, en, Guyane, euh, et, euh, pardon, en Guyane, en Guadeloupe et en métropole. Il euh, y a la Sainte-Lucie à côté, il euh, y a la Dominique, effectivement, qui pourrait être aussi euh, des cibles potentielles par rapport en fait, à ma gamme de produits. Et donc, en fait, ma question était de savoir, euh, par rapport à l'approvisionnement matière première, est-ce qu'il n'y aurait pas justement en fait, euh, des partenariats à créer 
euh, donc, par, par exemple autour du cactus, euh, qui est donc, euh, donc je parle du cactus raquette plus précisément. If I may respond to the young lady, I have to go back to the EU regulation again, and even on the raw material you have, you need some controls, you mean, you need some identification of the origin of the raw material, and if it is transformed in, in an OECS country, there will be also, um, there will be subjected to the EU regulation. But this is something that is possible and that we foster um, because we don't have all the raw material here and maybe we can collect all the products among the Caribbean countries. Thank you so much. In closing, any final contributions? It could be a response to one of the questions raised. Um, I just wanted to address a, a few things that uh, Mr. Mondesi pointed out that I have some slight disagreement with in that, I mean, I, I do not think all the drugs in Martinique comes from St. Lucia, for example. Okay. And <laughs> um, just, just to highlight the fact that if, if fear of those kinds of, of issues are what sort of limit the, the trap, that create travel restrictions, the people who want to engage in criminal activity have no shortage of money. So they can travel to France very easily. Okay. And France has not placed those restrictions on um, on Caribbean nationals. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Just we'll yes, to say quickly, the question of, of culture mm -hmm. and Creole, mm -hmm. uh, I support that um, very strongly as somebody who introduced Creole programming in St. Lucia many years ago for the first time. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Creole is the largest language mm -hmm. in CARICOM. If you add the population of Haiti to St. Lucia, mm -hmm. there are over 10 million people speaking Creole right. in the Caribbean community. Right. So yes, I, I think this is the way to go. And really, um, to conclude, I, I would like to mention a quote that I really like from um, Jean Monnet, founding father of the European Union, who said that without men, nothing is possible in terms of regional integration. But he also said that nothing lasts without institutions. So I think we really need to pay attention to the political will the engagement of the citizens across the regional integration spaces, as well as the institutions themselves. And on that point, as I offer Madame Lesdema the opportunity to conclude with some remarks. J'ai commencé surtout dire que la coopération entre la Caraïbe doit être du gagnant-gagnant. Donc, je ne se, tous être sur euh, la même longueur d'onde. Je, je rejoins tous ceux qui ont parlé de culture, de sport, de commerce, mais je reste persuadée que si on ne croit pas en la mobilité et qu'on ne démocratise pas l'ouverture du ciel, nous n'arriverons à rien du tout. Il faut arrêter la discrimination sur le temps par rapport à, à, à la venue euh, des Caribéens. Euh, Nous, France, on bénéficie d'une facilité de pénétration des territoires du, du, de la Caraïbe. Je pense qu'il faut qu'on fasse idem pour, euh, les, 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 pour euh, les, les pays de la Caraïbe. Voilà. Je vais conclure sur ça et en remerciant en tout cas toutes les questions qui étaient les bienvenues. Et dire que c'est un vaste sujet et ce n'est que le début du début. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you, Madame Lestina. Thank you to all the panelists. Thank you to the audience for coming out to listen to today's forum on regional integration. Thank you. The OECS Public Education Forum Series. Vini Cose. Come chat to us. Come talk to us. We're listening. Vini Cose is brought to you by the OECS 10th EDF Economic Integration and Trade of the OECS Region Project. Vini Cose.